Well, nothing beats getting up at 4 a.m. in the morning, driving to the lake for first light and seeing fish show on an empty pond. So we're at Stan Lake Lagoon in the heart of Oxfordshire. Oh, another one out there, it's good fish that. <laughs> and, and yeah, I'm on Water Rail Lake. So there's a couple of day ticket waters here, as well as the Syndicate water. And these are lovely, lovely lakes. I've been fortunate enough to fish here a few times in the past. And, and yeah, getting to this pond and seeing it empty is ideal, definitely, especially seeing so many fish in front of the swim as well. We're actually on by the gate swim, so it's nice and easy. Unload the van at the gate and get in the first swim that I saw a fish showing. So that's what I'm doing at the minute, just sort of sussing out exactly where they show. A few of them are sort of showing, but not bubbling. But the ones that are bubbling are obviously showing me sort of where to fish. So I'm just watching for a little bit longer before I start leading up the swim and hopefully not ruining it. Now there's there's been a few fish show to my left hand side here, but unfortunately there's quite a bit of tree cover that you can't cast around the corner. But he allows bait boats on here, so I'm probably gonna use one rod with a bait boat and fish with solid bags. Now fishing with solid bags is not something I do all the time, to be fair, but but you know, you always get a really decent presentation whenever you fish with a bag. And uh, I think that's gonna be a plan of attack at first. Fish with some solid bags. We've got 24 hours ahead of me. It's looking good for a few bites. So I'm dropping the first rod out and using a bait boat. It's not something I do very often, to be honest, but when you've got a situation like this and the trees on the left-hand side, it's impossible to cast around this corner and the fish know that. So they hang around this corner here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna put at least one rod out with the boat. I put a huge solid bag in there, the, the biggest that we do, because you just get the best presentation with that. You know, the rig's, the rig's all straight inside the bag. And obviously with it dropping out of a boat, I'm obviously a bit paranoid of the rig tangling and what have you. So uh, using a massive solid bag in a bait boat's a big edge, definitely, as well as using the boat, obviously. So I'm just having a look via the sonar, exactly where the slope is off of that bank. So as the bank, you know, as the bank drops away at the very bottom of the slope is, is where I think a lot of the fish will be patrolling up and down that bank because you've got a no fishing bank there. I think that's the, uh, that's what the fish know basically, you know, they know they're not being fished for around there. So unless you've got a boat, you can't actually get to them around this corner. So fingers crossed, um, can find exactly where this spot is around here. Hopefully we can get ourselves a quick bite, that'd be nice. Okay, I reckon that's in there. Oh, bombs away. Right, I'm just gonna have a quick lead about where I see a majority of the fish showing this morning out towards a tree opposite me. So I'm just gonna try and find a fairly clear area. It's weedy that. Bounce the lead along a bit. Ah, there we go. Lovely bit of gravel there. Sweet. So it's weed obviously at the back of that spot that I've already found there. Let's put that in a clip. And now it's back into weed again, so. Nice, right.
Oh, slam down. Tap, 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 up, weed. Nice, that was easy. <laughs> okay, we well, get that wrapped up. That's one spot found. Nice. It doesn't normally go that easy. I've never actually fished this swim before. It's just obviously observation of seeing where them fish were showing, casting that direction, found a nice little spot out there, get it wrapped up and put the rod on there. Nice. Okay, so that was 14 and a quarter. I've left it in the clip because I'm going to have a little lead round at that same distance uh, to another area that we're seeing them show as well, just slightly right of the swim. And if there's a spot there, it just makes life easier, doesn't it? At wrapping both rods up at the same distance. So, let's have a cast towards that tree. Mm, it's a bit soft, that was. Yeah, it's a bit weedy there. Cast left. Well, it's nice and smooth out there. Oh, that's in a bit of weed. Oh. Well, I found a little bit of a silt area, so that would be ideal, that will. One on the gravel and one on the silt. It's about two rod lengths to the right of where I found the little gravelly patch out there. So I'll just have another go with the lead at the horizon marker. bit weedy that was, that was slightly left of where I wanted it. Another goat. sure about that at the moment something I don't know something doesn't feel right it's not dropping properly I think it's dropping behind a weed bed or you know the weed beds this side of me as the leads dropping through the water something doesn't quite feel right as I'm feeling the lead down let's get the rod up high hit the clip boom yeah, it's just behind a bit of weed, that is. So just by keeping that rod up high, I reckon, yeah, and there's the weed, yeah. So yeah, I was right there. Yeah, so the lead, yeah, something just didn't feel quite right, but yeah, now I've kept the rod up high as the lead's gone down, it's banging down on the spot, and then you drag it about half a rod length this way, and there's a bit of weed there, so hence why it felt a little bit funny, but 14 and a quarter wraps as well, that's two rods sorted in the area that I was watching them show this morning. So I'm gonna get a cut the mesh bag. So well, I think I'm gonna put perhaps a, a stick mix on the gravel one, and then a little mesh bag of pellets on the spot just behind that weed bed there. And, uh, and yeah, just fish two little dumbbell wafters, two little bug dumbbell wafters, but fish them on a the Ronnie rig. And not a lot, but most people associate the Ronnie rig obviously with a pop up. I quite like using it with wafters and the hook holds you get are amazing to me. So, uh, so yeah, that's my approach. And uh, we'll see what happens. The grebe's just come up on the spot, squawking away at something. Right, nice, let's get some rods in the water. So that is now on the spot. Just see a fish show there as well, which was 
ideal. So that's the one just behind the weed bed. The right hand rod that's going to be. Yeah, literally just before I chucked the rod out, fish showed right on that area. So fingers crossed we won't have to wait too long with that rod. I'm a little bit surprised the other one hasn't gone yet. I'm get, getting a little bit slightly concerned it might not be in the right place, but you now we'll give it another half hour or so and then maybe have a redrop with that left hander. Let's get all three rods out of the pond first though. Right, so I'm just gonna make up a quick stick mix now. Um, nice and easy. I've got some bug stick mix here, dedicated stick mix. Just two handfuls of that into a bucket. Like so, and then some bug liquid food as well. Nice and easy. A little bit of liquid food in there. Now, ideally, you wanna do this almost the night before, but a little bit unprepared was so mixing it on the banks no hardship obviously so yeah just mix that all up together just make sure that that liquid's all the way through now what i find or what i see other people doing is putting larger items i.e sort of crumbing up boily and uh yeah it's not really ideal for a stick mix you don't really want to have too many different items in there you know these dedicated stick mixes are adequate enough for you just to use them on their own with a bit of liquid and the reasons being with that is where you're going to pull the hook into the actual stick bag itself if you've got larger items in there like sort of half boilies quarter boilies if you're crumbing them up as well in there they can mask the hook point so you always be mindful of that you know, people want to put so many different things into their stick mix. And there's no real need, to be honest. So, so yeah, just a little bit of liquid food. And that is looking absolutely lovely. Now, what I will add is just some two mil pellets. You know, they're tiny, tiny pellets. Then. They're not going to mask the hook point because of how small they are. And even if they did, they're that soft. You know, they would... Um, they wouldn't mask it too much and you know make the rig rig inadequate sort of thing so just a two small handfuls pellets in there mix that up and that's it so the sort of consistency that you want <laughs> that never mind the rear um, <laughs> and uh yeah the, the coots are massive on here by the way so uh <laughs> so uh yeah there's a there's a few big coots around here something to do with the pandemic i think but um but yeah yeah the sort of consistency it just so it binds together like so when you sort of touch it, it just breaks up like that you know that is absolutely perfect so yes right we'll get we'll get a stick made up and get that out into the pond as well so you might be wondering why am I using three different tactics? Well, you know, I'm sort of finding out what one's going to work best. A bit like when you're sort of zig fishing, you're fishing the different depths. I'm going to be fishing with three different tactics. I've obviously got solid bag with the boat and then a stick mix on one of the rods and then a little mesh bag of pellets on the other rod. And then if we get consistent bites on one method, then I'm going to change the other two over to that. So that's the reasoning for me using three different methods at the moment. Well, the left hand rod's been out for a couple of hours now and to be honest I, it should have gone by now i feel like it should have gone especially with the amount of fish that i saw when i first got here this morning around that corner so what i'm gonna do is just quickly whip, whip the rods in and then walk around get up the tree and go and have a look to see where the clear spot is around there maybe it's sat in a bit of low lying weed obviously using a solid bag that's not ideal you want it you know on clear gravel ideally and i know there's a spot around there somewhere so i'm going to go up the tree i've got pop-up with me i've got a couple of pop-ups with me a couple of white pop-ups and what i'll do is see where the spot is chuck a couple of white pop-ups over the top come back round to the swim and then see exactly where the hook baits or where these pop-ups are in relation to where i need to drop that rig oh, one's just shown to that left and shown again or is that a chicken what was that see that's to the right of where i am hmm yeah yeah, looking at where that's just shown 
I'm probably two rod lengths left of where that fish has just shown. So yeah, I'm going to get up the tree and go and have a look, see if I can see any fish about. It's gin clear water, so I should be able to see where the spot is and hopefully see if there's any fish milling about at all. Right, let's get round. Me, there's loads of them out here. Cool hell, man. Wow. Hell. Mate, you want to get up here? Holy right, so I'll do a PG version of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, wow. Um, so I've just got up this tree and there is absolutely loads of them here. Some good ones as well. There's some right good ones here, so the water's really, really murky. Well, there's obviously a lot of fish here, but I'm, I'm staring at 40, maybe 50 fish here. And they're all quite high up, but there's a few lower down milling about on the bottom. But yeah, there's absolutely loads of them here. So it's the right sort of zone, but... Right, okay, that fish has just come up off the spot. So the spot's out there. If I can get a bit higher, I think the problem might be here is if I chuck a couple of pop-ups out there, they'll no doubt get eaten by a fish. <laughs> There's that many of them here. Wow. Oh, right, yeah, now I can see the spot. Yeah, it's bloody huge. Yeah, that's quite a big area. And the fish has sat right over the top of it as well. So... Okay, right, okay. Let's hope these don't get eaten by a carp. <laughs> Sorted. Okay, so that's on the edge, so it's the right, as I look at it, it'll be the right hand one. Right, that's the two hook baits there. Let's get down. Run back to the swim. Very elegant. God, some bloody good fish out there. <laughs> right, so I am nowhere near where them fish are at all. Should have done that first, really. Schoolboy era, you know, I've had a couple of hours of the rod in the water and uh, yeah, stupid that. I should have gone up that tree. Now lined it up. I know exactly where it is. Still couldn't cast there from the swim, so yeah, I'm gonna get the boat. Okay, so it's to the right hand side of that pylon. Right, let's get that rod in. Okay, well I've not long chucked this rod out. This is on the stick. God, he's angry. He's gonna run out of lake in a minute as well. And it's just torn off, so that was on the middle rod on the stick this one and, and yeah that didn't take long at all so yeah as i was saying didn't take long at all for this rod to go on the stick so the stick's winning at the minute <laughs> obviously but i'm just sorting out uh, the other rods from obviously getting back round from chucking that pop-up out and i just quickly whipped whip these two rods out because they're obviously on the same area. Oh, he's up on the surface at the minute. It's a good fish, that. And, and yeah, yeah, we're in, we're in, which is ideal. This beautiful spring sunshine. That's what we like to see. Angry one, proper angry. So he's just found himself a bit of weed out there in a minute so i'm just keeping the pressure on at the moment not pulling his head off just keeping a steady pressure on it and if he starts to come out i'll just start walking back rather than pumping the rod best thing to do is just to walk back when they weed themselves up but if he if he stays there for a while i can obviously put the rod down and hope that he makes his way out of the weed but it's just being patient, you know, when they weed themselves up. I know you want them in the net as soon as possible, but when they do weed themselves up, it's just, just
just be patient, that is the main thing. So he's been there for a, a little bit. All I'm gonna do is just take a couple of steps forward, just take a tiny bit of the pressure off. And sometimes they think they've got away with it and they tend to kick themselves out. I'm not feeling nothing at the moment. Let's give it one last pull. I'll put the rod down. No, right, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just slightly loosen the clutch off and I'm gonna pop the rod back down on the rest, put the bobbin on, switch the alarm on, and hopefully kicks his way out and I can get that other rod ready in the meantime. So yeah, it's all about being patient at the minute. You know, just be patient with it. Clip that bobbin back on, which will obviously tell me if he gets back out with the weed or not. So I'll just leave that for a little while. Hopefully he kicks himself back out. Come on. Right, so that fish hasn't moved as of yet. The bobbin stayed still on that middle rod. So I'm just gonna drop this left hand rod out and then hopefully by the time I've dropped this out, that middle one, I'll try and get him out the weed. A bit concerned that it hasn't moved after sort of putting it down on the rest. Normally by now it's been, oh, there we go, there we go, as I talk. He's got himself back out by the looks of things. Right, let's rapidly drop this out. There he's away, <laughs> typical. Right, I'm just gonna drop this quickly. Right, there it is. Six foot two, nice and clear. Lovely, right, bombs away. Sorted, right, that's that, ow. Right, let's get you out. Mmm, that. All right, well, I've been as patient as I can be with this rod. I think my next move is to dome the waders and maybe just try a different angle. That can work sometimes. So I'm going to get the waders on, just wade up the margin a little bit. See if I can pull at a different angle, sometimes that pulls them out. So let's drop him back down on the rest for the minute. Uh, I think it's a case of asking the owner, see if he can go out in the boat and hopefully get him out of the weed for us because he's been in there a while now. You know, it's been a good nearly half hour. Him stuck in that weed. So, so yeah, I think best bets is ask the owner if, Get out of there for us. Okay, Marvin's on you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, I don't know actually. I think he's weak. I think he has. And Tommy's just out there at the moment, just pulling him out and literally just popped him out the weed then. And uh, he went straight back in it instantly. So, you know, I don't want to go pulling his head off or nothing. And he's told me it's a good one as well. <laughs> just now got the knees going. Right, I'm just going to keep walking back, get him away from that weed. <laughs> oh, right. 
Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's... Now we're now we're talking. Ah, oh, right. So yeah, Tommy's just pulled him out the weed for the second time. He's now in front of the swim here. No doubt regained his energy all back. God, he's fighting well. God, it'd be lovely to get this one in, especially after him saying you want to get him in <laughs> as well. Oh yeah, he looks bloody gorgeous. <laughs> Please stay on. Oh yeah, man. God, he's lovely. Oh no, don't go over that other rod. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, he is nice. Just got him over there. Get off me netly. Oh yeah, he is gorgeous. Let's get the old back one on. Come on in. Yes. Oh god, the relief. <laughs> oh nice, lovely jubbly. Oh, and breathe. Nice, 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 nice. Right. Let's hoist him up and have a look. God. <sighs> Look at that for a start. Absolutely gorgeous. 17 pound, weight irrelevant obviously when they're this nice and all that. But it would appear that the stick is the one that's doing the do at the moment, the old bug stick mix. And uh, and yeah, it'll be nice to get that rod back out to see whether, easy, easy, whether we get more bites on that after obviously ruining the spot a little bit with this one weeding himself up. But wow, what a carp. He is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, yeah, very, very nice. A few more of these today would be absolutely lovely indeed. Thank you very much. Nice. <laughs> oh, look at him getting all angry as well. Yeah, totally different. Almost like a different fish this side, and uh, just as uh, just as lovely as well, of course. Wow, magnificent carp! Yeah, like I say, a few more of these today would be lovely. But even if you don't, you know, you don't mind catching one that looks like this on a day trip. That would be nice. But we got 24 hours, so let's hope there's a fair few more to be had. Cheers, beast. Mwah. Done you? And done. Done over. It was weird. It was a bit of an odd bite that as well. And the lead's still on. <laughs> Don't know. It was some liner, wasn't it? Ah, no, it was. Look. It was a bite. Lead's come out that section of it. it just got away with it. Savage. Right, I now have no rods in the pond. So yeah, I'm not too sure what's gone on. Well, I've been done. That's what's gone on there. And on the bait boat rod. So I'm going to get these other two rods. I'm going to change the other two over to the stick mix now, chuck them out into the pond, and then give the bait boat another chance. And if the sticks go before the bait boat does, then I might just bin that off and just cast as close as I sort of can towards the area. Well, the area is quite a large zone and I think if I get sort of out with the waders, I think I could just about cast to the edge of the spot. So I may do that, but for the meantime, I'm just gonna keep things as they are, but swap the other two rods over to sticks out in the pond and, uh, and yeah, see what happens. Tail rubber up there. <laughs> I 
right up on the surf, but he's kiting right, which is ideal. So he's staying away from that weed. So yeah, I just walk straight back then because I don't want him burying himself in the weed. So, right. Which is ideal, but we haven't even got the other rod sorted yet. So the old stick is winning at the moment, most definitely. They're loving that bug stick mix. And, you know, there's a lot of fish cruising around on the surface as well, and it's obviously spring, and you would just think, put zigs out, you know, but, but it just goes to show, you know, these little mouthfuls of bait, little traps, you know, it does catch them. Oh yeah, lovely. You are right, mate? Get one then. Get one then. Yes, nice. Ah, oh, lovely jubbly. Ah, oh, there we go. Another beautiful Stan Lake mirror. And again, on that stick mix. And uh, yeah, I think we'll probably concentrate on the old stick mix today. And yeah, fingers crossed there's a fair few more of these to be had. Absolutely gorgeous, as I'm sure you'd all agree. Probably 13, maybe 14 pound this one. Mint all the same, lovely. <laughs> well, well, whilst we've got a little bit of a lull in the activity at the moment, I'll just show you the rig that I've been catching on. Now, obviously the stick mix, that's been the one that's been getting me the bites on them Ronnies. I've binned off the bait boat now, to be honest. We're getting plenty of bites out on them spots at the moment. I didn't get great drops in a minute, so I, I think that's why the activity's not as hectic as what it was earlier on. So I'm just gonna run you through the rig now, how I tie exactly, <clears throat> and then have a rechuck and hopefully we can get ourselves another quick bite. So the material that I use for the Ronnie rig is Illusion in 20 pound which is like a fluorocarbon hook link, this is. My favorite hook link. I cut about, I don't know, what's that, 15 inches off. I like to have plenty of it because there's nothing worse than tying a rig and having it too short at the end. So you're always better off over, over cutting the amount of material you need. So first off, I'll tie the swivel one. So these are dedicated or Ronnie or spinner swivels, you know, people call it a spinner and what have you. And all I do is tie a loop in that end. Now, because I'm using this with the wafters, I tie a figure of eight loop. If I do it with the pop-ups, then if I fish the rig with a pop-up, then I tend to do the perfect loop knot. So because it's a wafter one, you can get away with just using the figure of eight loop knot. Now, it's not a very big loop, probably about 10 mil in size. So just feed that through there. Feed the tag through as well, like so. And just tie off that figure of eight loop, not like that. So just bring it down to where I want it so that the loop's roughly around about sort of 10 mil. Just wet it off and then send that knot home. So just pull it tight there, just in your hands for the moment. I'll get a puller tool on it once I've actually finished the rig. So just leave that tag end long for the moment. And then the other end, tie another figure of eight loop knot. So this is roughly up. I have my rig probably about sort of nine to 10 inches long is perfect. Tie another figure of eight loop knot, the other end, and then that will go on to the quick link swivel that's on the leg clip system. So let's tie that off, cross that over, and then through there. Wet that off. And now I can use a couple of puller tools to send them knots home properly before you cut the tag ends off. So let's pop that one there and that one in there and just pull and then hold it for about three seconds and that sends them knots home like so. 
Right, and we can cut the tag ends off. Pick your rubbish up, put it in the bin, always, always. Cut the other tag end off. Like so, pick the rubbish up, bin it. Okay, so that's pretty much the boom section there, done. Now, for the hook end, so it's barbless only on Stan Lake Lagoons, and that's on all of the lakes over here. So just double check the hook, make sure he's razor sharp, which he is, which they always are, but you've always got to double check, of course. Now that's a medium curve in a size six, and Bit of silicon tubing. I cut off roughly about sort of 15 mil of the tubing. Cut that off and then feed that on eye end first. So feed that on there so that it's sat on the back of the shank like so. And then feed the actual eye of the hook onto the swivel and then pull that silicon tubing over the top. Now that holds that hook in place. And all I do next is hold the swivel like so and then just gently burn that off. Okay, and that shrunk that shrink tube in now and it holds that hook in place and that gives you that nice claw effect. So you don't want the hook sort of sitting up straight. I find having that sort of that curve within the rig, you know, that's... Oh, that's a bite, that's a bite, that's a bite. Typical. <laughs> to be continued, indeed. Right, so before we were rudely interrupted by Terry the Tench, we'll get back to the rig. So we've just finished off shrinking the shrink tube there. I mentioned that you like that claw effect, not so that the hook sat up straight, like so, you know, you've got that nice curve and clawed effect there that, um, that nails them in the bottom lip nine times out of 10. So uh, so yes, that's that part done. Now I thread on a micro ring swivel. So thread on one of them, that will go on next. So you wanna thread the ring on first, like so, that on there, and then get yourself a little bead, little hook bead. Just slide the hook bead on. Fat end first, bring the hook bead round. And I sort of like, now normally, sort of with the, with the pop-up rig, you'd have it sort of further up the hook bead, but because I'm using it wafter style, I like it a little bit further back, almost in line with the point of the hook, because that tends to drop the hook down in the bottom of the fish's mouth a lot easier than it would do if you had that bead sort of slightly up you know you don't you tend to get hook holds in the side of the mouth if you have that hook that hook bead there further up but that's only obviously if um you're using a wafter if you're using a pop-up you want it almost opposite the barb i feel so that's that part of the rig done and then it's just a case of flossing on a hook bait now in this case it's a bug dumbbell. So what was that one? A white. So I'm getting bites on the white and the pinks at the moment. I don't think one's doing better than the other at the minute, but I'll just keep them, you know, one on one and one on the other. So straight through the centre of the dumbbell, like so. And then a bit of eight floss. Take that off. So you want to thread your bait floss through the swivel of your micro ring swivel. Thread that dumbbell on, like so. And then you just wanna bring the barrel so that it's halfway into the hook bait. Okay, so you don't wanna completely cover that swivel. You still like that little bit of movement that you've got there in the hook bait. Trim that off. Rubbish in the bin, and then 
just blob the end of that off. So light the end there, and then blob it off with the end of the lighter. And that is the rig pretty much complete. So now all I would do is get my little stick, thread my stick on. So it's so ideal to have a sort of stick needle for this, which has got a latch at one end. Let's just poke that through the bottom of the stick, like so, out the other end, and then grab hold of your loop, latch over, and then just pull the whole rig through that stick there. And then what you'll find the other end is it can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. You can just move the swivel around a little bit just so that it feeds inside that stick a lot easier. Feed that in. You want to mask the hook point as well with the stick itself like so and then next up just get myself a tungsten tail rubber just grab a tungsten tail rubber onto the latch needle Push that all the way down, and then just grab a needle like so, latch it over, and then just pull that tungsten tail rubber over the top, and then that can be clipped straight onto the quick link swivel, and that is the rig complete. And that's what's doing the bites at the moment. So, like I say, this this is what I'm going to have on all the rods now, and uh, hopefully we can get a fair few more bites today you know this they're up on the surface at the moment so it's not ideal but but I think that spot that I found out there is you know it's got fish drifting over it all the time and I think that they're just sort of either seeing that bright hook bait or the attraction of the sticks just making them drop down and we're getting bites as soon as we're seeing fish sort of swim over the area so that's ready to go out into the pond Few hours have passed now and yeah the rods on the bottom have been a little bit quiet there's been a lot of fish on the surface as there has been all day so oh God, i can't help myself i've got the floater kit out of the motor i've put a couple of spots out i even chucked the third well i say chucked the third i boated the third rod out because there was a lot of fish sort of still around that left hand side and that's not setting the world on fire at all at the minute so i've got the floater kit out of the motor and put a couple of spots out there. The response isn't as great as I thought it would be. Uh, I thought they'd start taking straight away, but we've had one fish sort of have a little go and that's been about it. So I let them build their confidence up a little bit and get one of the rods in and have a little go on the surface for them if they start obviously feeding with gusto but at the minute they seem a little bit finicky which is a bit strange considering how many fish is on the surface at the moment i thought they would obviously get straight on it because they haven't been battered yet off of the surface we're still obviously in spring water's still cold and uh and yeah normally if you can get them going, they're quite easy to catch, but it's getting them going. And that's that's what I need to do at the moment as they've just started coming up on the left-hand side of the swim here. So yeah, that's looking a bit more promising now. So yeah, I've just got a little 12 mil SLK pop-up and that's gonna be hopefully their downfall. I've got a mixture of different size floaters out there. I've sort of got 12 mil, 6 mils, there's a bit of everything in my bag that have been soaked in oil for God knows how long. And uh, and yeah, let's hope we can nab one off the surface because I can't sit behind these rods being all static and seeing all these fish out there in the moment and not at least try and have a go for them. So I'm going to just sit back for the minute see what these fish do on the surface and if they, like I say, if they start feeding with confidence, I'm going to have a go for them. Yo, 
Yep, we're in. <laughs> Is he? All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, well. This has not been easy, let me tell you. This has been hard work to try and get one off the surface at the moment. And yeah, we've hooked what we think is a decent sized ghosty. And I'm just keeping the rod down low. I've, I've had this before when I've fished weedy waters, surface fishing and keeping the rod down low like this gets you weeded up <laughs> but <laughs> would normally not get you weeded up and that's exactly what he's just done now damn but, but yeah I'm just gonna apply the pressure oh god I really want to get this one in because we've worked so hard to try and hook one off the surface I'm desperate to get this one in oh, he's weeded me up I can't believe it See, and normally if you keep the rod tip down low, it does tend to keep them up higher in the water. But that's not been the case at the minute, which is a shame. Damn, damn. Oh. Oh, he's not a million miles out either, look. Oh, I reckon if I down the waders and go right, I reckon I'll get him out. Yep, we're out. Uh, yeah, if he could. Come on then, you. Stop fighting. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Where are you going? We're in. We got him. Yes, right. I'm sorting birds from eating all my mixers. <laughs> well, about him, he looks a million years old, this one. So the ghosty that finally took that surface bait and uh, after getting weeded up I thought you know what that size 10 barbless hook he's probably going to fall off but he didn't thank god just getting that little um, line angle on him moving up to the swim next door pulled him out of the weed and yeah this is the result absolutely awesome like I said he looks a million years old this one proper cool carp more than happy to finally get one off the surface they haven't been easy I haven't been easy at all off the surface, but I feed him with a little, I'm looking over the cameraman's shoulder at the minute and they're still slurping off the top. So let's get this one back. Let's get that surface rod out there and see if we can get one more before the day ends. Oh, we've had a right calamity, let me tell you. So <coughs> we tried to get another drone shot of me hooking one off the surface. I might have been a little bit too accurate with the uh, cast and I plummeted the drone out the sky with a floater rod, which it's now about to wipe out my other rod. No, come this way. And uh, the left hand rod's just gone. So it's all happening at the moment. We've got a sunken drone in the pond at the minute because I've taken it out with my floater rod and We've now got one on the left hand. <laughs> it's all going on at the minute. Oh wow! Well, but it's insured, so so you know all, all is all is good in the world. The the drone's insured, so it's not ideal, is it? He's in quite quickly. Is he a tinker? I can't even see, I'm that blinded by the light. Yeah. Here's a little mirror. All right, let's get you in. <laughs> oh, I might even keep me lead here. Come on in, come on in. Yeah, come on then. Yes, lovely. Oh, 
That's a little consolation there, considering we've just for you. sunk a £500 drone. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> oh, God. Joe's like that, ah, never again, never again am I coming out with you. <laughs> What's a nightmare. We got one in the net, at least. We got one in the net. Oh, wow. Just for the record, I am laughing about this. Yeah, Joe is laughing, Joe is laughing. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I think we may end up naming this the drone fish. <laughs> right, we're going to whip him back. He's a little bit lively and... See if we can attempt to get the drone out of the pond whilst we send you on your way. Right, thank you for the visit. Away you go. Lovely. Just show us where that drone is. <laughs> well, what started off a very eventful day has sort of tailed off a little bit, especially if the drone sinking obviously in the lake is an ideal but but you know uh with that aside we've managed to get a few bites today which has been nice would have been better to have obviously uh landed the drone on the bank but you know it's one of them things i guess but we've got a cob on now gonna have a nice bit of food i'm quite surprised these bottom rods haven't gone off as of yet but you know, we've got the rest of the night to go. Going to have some nice food now. Got some chicken fires on the cobs, some corn on the cobs as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see what the night brings. Good morning, a very chilly morning as well. I did manage a bite last night on the middle rod, which I didn't put back out, being lazy. <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, it was only a small one. And, and yeah, I decided to put the rod up against a bivy. Long day yesterday. And, and yeah, I um, got up early this morning, put the rods back out. Fish are showing exactly like they were yesterday, sort of round to the left-hand side and they're slowly sort of working their way round to the right of the swim at the minute. Decided to put a couple of spots and mixers out there just to see if we can get them going in the morning. But what I thought was fish taken, I think they're just showing in amongst the mixers at the moment. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled on the water to see whether, whether they start coming up for these mixers. And if they do, I'll reel in one of the rods and uh, plump it back out. The left hand rod that I put out with the bait boat, it's just, it's just not been set in the world on fire that, which surprises me really, but I suppose it just goes to show the importance of casting and feeling the spot and dropping on, you know, the spot that you've leaded up every time. And, you know, with the other two rods, we've had plenty of bites on them. And that's because, you know, I'm chucking back onto the same spot every single time. Whereas with the boat, it could be, you know, a foot left, a foot right. You don't quite know because I haven't got that clipped up or anything. So, so yeah, that's probably sat in weed at the minute because it hasn't gone. So I might redo that rod, but I'm really, I'm sort of hoping they're going to come up for these mixers so that we can get one last bite off of the surface before the trip's over. Right, well, the left hand is gone. It's almost like every time I try a different method, the opposite happens. But yeah, it's been it's been a quiet morning on the on the uh, fish front. They seem to be taken fairly confidently off of the surface, but out of my swim, unfortunately. You know, the mixers have drifted up to the other end of the lake and they're taking confidently down there. But I was hopeful that one of these bottom rods were gonna go rather than having to move down there sort of thing. And uh, he's gonna wipe that line out. <laughs> Which he is, and uh, 
yeah, so I was a bit reluctant to reel the rods in because, you know, I was sort of hopeful that this might happen, what's happening now. And, uh, you yeah, know, we've got a little mirror. It looks like one of the stock pond escapees, this one. That's picked up the left hand up. He's <laughs> doing his best to wipe the other rod out. Oh, look, there's a pike chasing him. <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> it's a pike having a go. Oh, God. He's a bit big for you, mate. Look, <laughs> nose to nose they are. Well, we better get him in before he gets eaten. <laughs> right, come on in, you. Oh, he's a lovely one, though. Come on in. Come on in. Hey. There we go. Yeah, it's definitely a stock pond escapee, hence the old pike chasing him and all. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let's hoist him up, have a look at him. And, yeah, let's hope that they can get on these mixers. Be nice to get one off the top. Well, no matter how far I hold him out, I think there's no getting away from the fact that he nearly got eaten on the way in by a jack pike. <laughs> so, <laughs> although he's small, he's very, very cool indeed. And, yeah, this one on, on the, that big solid bag, the only difference is I put a load of 12 millers in it this time in the boat as well and uh yeah it's bought us a bike might not be the biggest in the world but he's definitely a cool one right well we've just slipped back that pike bait and uh just to go to show you how greedy he was i'm obviously using the largest pva bags that we do because i'm dropping them in the boat these would be very difficult to cast but obviously you get a lot of bait in one of these bags now i'm using them via the rapid system inside the system you get the loader and then you get the collar as well now you pop the collar over the top of the loader like so and then that closes it up like like it is there so it's all under tension there which allows you then to slip the loader into the top of the bag nice and easily like so so once you've actually slipped the loader in the bag like that you take the collar off and then it expands okay which gives you nice and easy access to put all your bait inside. So pop the collar to one side. We'll start off with some two mil crayfish pellets, just in the bottom of the bag there. Like so, okay. And then you can load your rig inside. Now actually place the rig at the bottom. Now if, you, if your hook's sitting a little bit funny, you can almost use the lead just to tap it in place so you can get it exactly how you'd like it. And then the beauty with these systems is you can then hook the line in the very top of it there, and then that will hold that lead in place, like so. So it sits in top of the groove that's in the top there, and then that allows you now to obviously load it in. The beauty with these large bags is that rig is obviously gonna be sitting completely straight with inside the bag there. So I'm just gonna load a few more two mil pellets into the top and then the rest is going to be some crayfish maxi mix which are another pellet of all different sizes smell absolutely gorgeous these pellets so load that up like so get a fully loaded so yeah, as you can see he was greedy indeed that little one was get that lead completely covered now the other beauty with this rapid system is to pop your line out of at the collar there. Now you don't need to actually tie this off. So you don't need PVA string and you end up with the string still on the line after a few hours. All you do is you just twist the bag like so, keeping hold of the PVA actually on the loader there and then just lick round the loader like so dampen that off and then slide it over the top of the bag and then just hold the loader at the top there for a little while and what that does is it sticks the pva down and look now you've got yourself a pva bag ready to rock and roll it's all tied off we do this in we do this system in all of our bag sizes so for the long distance bags as well as right the way up to these massive bags of course and yes yeah, just nice and easy easy to load the pellets into and uh, like I say there's no tying off or anything they're a great little system they are right let's get that back in the boat get it back out onto the spot 
try and catch ourselves one more. One last cast. They have been very, very difficult all day on the surface, unfortunately, and on the bottom as well, I suppose. <clears throat> Get out there. But yes, yeah, just been one of them days where, oh, just landed that right next to a fish, spooked it. It's how the day's gone, to be honest. You've chucked out there, they fed left, they fed right, they've just not tended to feed anywhere near the hook bait, unfortunately, but it's one of them things. No doubt Joe will be halfway home and I'll end up hooking one then. But, but you know, we've caught some lovely carp uh, using, you know, a few different tactics, obviously, with them big, large, solid bags, as well as the sticks. You know, them sticks, I feel like chucking them on the same spot each time. That's, you know, being consistent with your angling. That's what's got us, you know, consistent bites off of them rods. Whereas with the boat, you know, sometimes you're dropping slightly left, sometimes you're dropping slightly right. You never bang on every time, I feel. So one of them things, it would have been nice to have ended this with a carp in my hands, but you know, uh, that's fishing for you, I guess. You can't have it all. But I've enjoyed myself. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video as well. And yeah, till next time.